So friends, in my opinion, Kamala Harris is the right person for this moment and the right person for this opponent. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Okay, friends, let me say something right up front. I am kind of partial to former prosecutors. Probably not a surprise, I'm a former prosecutor, a former career prosecutor. But the reason I say that up front is it may help frame what I'm about to say regarding Vice President Kamala Harris, because watching her give speeches and interviews in recent days in my opinion, she is the exact right person for this moment in time. She is the right person to take the fight to and defeat Donald Trump. Why is that? Well, let me start by quoting at some length some new reporting from the Daily Beast. Headline, Harris opens fire on Trump. Predator? fraudster, cheater. And that article begins, Vice President Kamala Harris gave the public its first real look into her nascent presidential campaign with a stop at her organization's headquarters in Wilmington, Delaware, on Monday night. Harris's first applause line came when she discussed her background as a California attorney general and as a courtroom prosecutor. Quote, in those roles, I took on predators of all kinds. Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. She gave the public a snippet of her biography, discussing how she specialized in cases involving sexual abuse as a young prosecutor, how she put a for-profit college out of business, and how she created one of the country's first environmental justice units. Harris juxtaposed her record with that of Trump, who she pointed out was found liable for sexual abuse, ran a scammy for-profit college, and tried to cut deals with oil lobbyists. Quote, but make no mistake, all of that being said, this campaign is not just about us versus Donald Trump, Harris said. There's more to this campaign than that. Our campaign has always been about two different versions of what we see as the future of our country. Donald Trump wants to take our country backward to a time before many of our fellow Americans had full freedoms and rights. But we believe in a brighter future that makes room for all Americans, she said. Building up the middle class would be a defining goal of her presidency and name-checked Project 2025 as an initiative that would weaken it. She stressed voting rights, universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban before turning to abortion rights. Quote, if Trump gets the chance, he will sign a national abortion ban to outlaw abortion in every single state, but we're not going to let that happen, Harris said. It is this team here that's going to help this November to elect a majority of members of the United States Congress who agree the government should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. And when Congress passes a law to restore reproductive freedoms, as President of the United States, I will sign it into law. She then asked the audience what kind of country they wanted to live in. Quote, a country of freedom, compassion, and the rule of law, or a country of chaos, fear, and hate. So friends, you've probably already heard people referring to this presidential race as the prosecutor versus the criminal. And that is exactly right. That's what we're dealing with. 
a former prosecutor who's running to be president, and a current criminal convicted of 34 felonies pending sentencing, also pending criminal trials in three other prosecutions, both state and federal, and that convicted felon is running to stay out of prison. But because Kamala Harris is a former prosecutor and a former state attorney general, she is perhaps perfectly positioned to take on what will be one of the toughest challenges of her presidency. That involves what to do with corrupt federal judges. There are only a handful. Unfortunately, a few of them sit atop our federal judiciary. They are Supreme Court justices, and there's one down in Florida. So let's turn to some of the recent reporting regarding those judges and justices. This from Politico. Headline, Trump is poised to bypass his legal woes thanks to judges he appointed. Donald Trump is on the cusp of emerging unscathed from his four criminal prosecutions, thanks almost entirely to the decisions of four judges he appointed. Trump's three Supreme Court picks formed a decisive block to declare presidents immune from prosecution for official conduct, freezing the charges he faces in multiple jurisdictions for trying to subvert the 2020 election and putting his New York conviction in doubt. Then, his nominee to the federal court in Florida, Judge Aileen Cannon, handed him another victory by dismissing the charges he faces for hoarding classified documents and concealing them from investigators. Her, Judge Cannon's, decision earned a shout-out from Trump as he accepted the Republican nomination on Thursday. Quote, a major ruling was handed down from a highly respected federal judge in Florida, Aileen Cannon, he said. And let's be clear, friends, it will be no easy task for President Kamala Harris, assuming she is elected, to deal with the rot at the top, the corruption on the Supreme Court. Because let's be clear, some of our country's foremost constitutional scholars have observed that the opinion they handed down in Trump versus United States, the absolute presidential immunity ruling, basically declared that portions of the Constitution are unconstitutional. Supreme Court justices don't have the right, don't have the authority, not the lawful authority, to nullify portions of the Constitution, but for the time being, they have. And Judge Aileen Cannon's decision down in Florida to just throw out Donald Trump's classified documents case, obstruction of justice case, and espionage case is unsupportable. There is no precedent supporting what she did. She did an enormous favor for Donald Trump. Remember, she did that once before and was unanimously reversed by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, consisting of three judges, all appointed by Republican presidents, two appointed by Donald Trump. They unanimously reversed Judge Cannon, found that she abused her discretion and did something that the law does not allow to the extreme advantage of Donald Trump, and she's gone and done it again. These are not easy fixes. What a president of the United States, indeed what a Congress can do about justices or judges who have decided to abandon their loyalty to the Constitution and to the rule of law. But if anybody is up to the task, it is a former prosecutor, a former attorney general, a former senator, a former vice president, who will make one hell of a president of the United States. Yes, she's the right person for this moment and for this opponent, Donald Trump. 
because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.